Hello, Reptile Entrepreneurs. This is Bill Strand, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic for those of us working in the digital world, and that's the protection of our images and our uh, products itself. And a number of us have had problems with our images being lifted and they're being used in ways that we did not authorize. Like this morning, I, I found out that someone was using my images to sell some of their chameleons. And so this is uh, definitely an epidemic out there. Uh, it does go a little bit further. And, uh, and some people actually have their products stolen. And today I have with me Jennifer Cook of snakearts.com, and she's going to share with us what she's been going through. Jennifer, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Bill. Um, yes, I have been snakearts.com uh, since 2004, uh -huh. and um, last year I switched my website from a portfolio site to an e-commerce site, and literally overnight my entire website was scraped and my images and product descriptions were used in fraudulent ads uh, and posts all over social media, Pinterest, Facebook in particular, and Instagram. And they had pirated my images, remo removed the watermarks, and were claiming to sell the artwork at a one-tenth of the cost of production. Mm. Now, when you say your website was scraped, what does that mean? Uh, there are bots and people who go out, and if it is any website at all, they can take all of the data and all of the images and all the item descriptions and essentially right-click everything and steal it. It is a particular problem with e-commerce sites because there are bots that are created specifically to scrape all of the data. What do they do with it once they scrape the data? And in particular with me, it was to steal the images for uh, product mining. Um, they did not have permission to use them and they don't have the authorization or the ability to produce these items, but yet they have stolen the images and claim to sell these things. I've seen this on uh, Instagram and Facebook to where mm -hmm. we see this incredible uh, piece of art Yet, and I actually purchased one of these, and what I found was it was this little miniature, and uh, it definitely wasn't what I thought it would be. Is, is that what's happening to you? Yes. Uh, the images have been scraped, and they will essentially use social media as a Kickstarter. And the higher engagement that a post gets, then they will move on to counterfeiting, and which is also copyright infringement. So they will take the image and if it plays well on social media, they will actually find a counterfeiter in China or Southeast Asia to create a tiny, ugly replica of mm -hmm. it. But then they will sell using the artist's original images, which is what has happened to me. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, well, let's just start with, uh, first of all, your images with a watermark. A lot of people mm -hmm. think, I'm going to put a watermark on my images so people can't use them. But you say they just take the watermark off. Yes, they took the watermark off. It was poorly photoshopped. Um, and now there is instant technology with the new Samsung phones that have come out where you just tap on the image. And if there's a person in it that you don't want or a watermark in it, it will instantly disappear. Um, so technology has gotten far better at stealing and removing attribution. Why don't they just leave it in to make it seem like they are you. Occasionally that will happen, especially if they can't remove the watermark without damaging the image or okay. if the artist has uh, name recognition. I have seen where they will actually claim to be the artist and set up fake Facebook profiles and Instagram profiles and fake shops. My website was actually cloned twice uh, with only the URL as being different. And then they would put other products on those fake websites and sell using my name and using my images as well as others. It seems like this has to be against the terms of service of Facebook and Instagram. Absolutely. Uh, why is this not easy just to report them? Uh, I have reported them. Uh, Facebook and Instagram in particular are very bad about responding. And as of today, there were still 35 posts that had shared the fraudulent ads that were still up 15 months later. 
So they have not been held accountable uh, to the laws that were on the books before they were. But I I don't understand how this is not something that they just don't take care of immediately. It it should be easy to tell that this is not you. Uh, What is the problem there? Uh, Laziness. (laughs) And probably get, money going to someone's they, pocket. They get paid for the ads. They get paid mm. for the clicks. Um, so they have no real incentive to remove it other than a legal threat. And legally, they are required to do so in a timely fashion. And all of the content must be removed. And the repeat infringers must be banned from the platform. Uh, as of today, the repeat infringers because they had actually pirated other artists work before me. So Mm -hmm. I know because I know the other artists that they had had a DMCA strike against that page. And yet those pages are still up and they were allowed to run ads. What recourse do you have in a situation like this? Lawsuit. Okay. Uh, And I am currently uh, attempting to lead a class action lawsuit on behalf of the creators against Facebook um, because they have not honored the law. I have notified over 100 artists myself of their artwork being pirated on Facebook alone. That sounds like an enormous amount of work on your part to do this. Yes. Yes. And an enormous amount of cost. Yes. It's been over $10,000. Uh, I, Facebook requires a trademark in order to use their IP tools, uh, their brand protection tools, which it's trademark against a copyright infraction. So those are two completely different things. And yet Facebook requires a trademark. So I went and actually received my trademark and I was refused their, their tool, their IP reporting tool, uh, for my my own brand and my own brand protection. Trademark for art. How does, Yes, I, I'm not understanding the connection there. Facebook requires a trademark in order to be accepted into their brand protection, which oh, okay. is a different thing than, than copyright. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have to have like a trademark on your company name or logo? I do. So I have a trademark on snake arts and I have a cap- a, a copy or a, Trademark on J.L. Cook, which is how I sign my my artwork. But why and why is that necessary to protect artwork? Which you... it should not be. Yeah. Uh, the moment that an artwork is in fixed and tangible form, it has U.S. copyright if there are your, a U.S. artist. Yeah. However, you cannot bring a lawsuit unless you have filed a registered copyright which I have done for my work. So I have that registered copyright number. And so that is how I'm able to, to uh, bring the lawsuit. So how? many artists don't register their copyrights. I imagine most artists don't realize they have to. Yes, they don't have to register their copyrights. But if their artwork is stolen, then they can't bring a lawsuit unless they have. What are the direct effects of somebody stealing your design uh obviously if they do that they they don't have the original they don't have the quality and so they're just uh, defrauding people essentially yes uh how does that affect you and your business personally well i was very good at taking the websites down and so the people who bought are angry and they come and they look because the shop is gone the the previous scammer shop Mm -hmm, is gone, mm -hmm. but they find me and they think that I have scammed Uh, them. So it harms my reputation. It harms my brand. And as well as it devalues the work. I work in bronze. So my pieces are hundreds and thousands of dollars. And the scammers said that these were (laughs) $49.95. Mm-hmm. So I actually have people who have found me and they're like, oh, I'm so happy that I found you. I want to buy from the original artist and they want the scammer's price. Yes. Well, of course. How does this go forward? You say a lawsuit. Uh, how do you envision uh, this happening? I'm not exactly sure. 
uh, I have a lawyer and they have brought a lawsuit and we are seeking class action status for all of the creators who have had their artwork pirated and used for fraudulent ads on social media. We really just want them to uphold the law as it stands. What is it you can hope to achieve? Is it simply Facebook taking down these scammers? No. Uh, if Facebook is held accountable to the law as it's currently written, and there is an award against them, if there's a, a, then every other social media platform and internet platform will be held to the same standard. Okay. So Amazon and Wish and Pinterest and Instagram and all of the other um, social media sites will be held to the same standard, which they should have been held to to begin with. Mm -hmm. How widespread is this? It's global and it's massive. Um, I became part of a, a Facebook scam busters group and an internet mm -hmm. scam busters group. And we are notifying artists every day, two and three artists a day, that their images have been pirated for scams. Say we're starting at the beginning. We have an artist or even anybody getting on social media. What steps would you suggest they take from the beginning to try to keep this from happening? Is there anything you can do? At this point, no. Um, the terms and conditions essentially say that face are in Facebook's favor and in the internet uh, provider's favor. There's a thing called Section 230, which essentially gives an internet uh, platform immunity from liability for, for what someone else says on the platform. Mm -hmm. And that unfortunately includes fraud. Um, however, there are carve outs for copyright infringement and for um, other child endangerment. So they just haven't had this brought to them yet, even though it's been rampant for at least the last 10 years. And is it worth it for artists or anybody else to put watermarks on their images? Definitely. Uh, if you make it harder for the image to be stolen, put the watermark over the artwork in a place where if you remove that through Photoshop, it would damage the image. Um, and if it's shared, then there's a good chance that someone legitimately will have shared it and you will be able to track back where the, the image source came from. The other thing, if you're actually an artist and you're going to monetize your work, uh, if you're going to mass market your work, definitely register your copyrights. Okay. It, it's the only way you can bring a lawsuit. And I only see this getting worse as far as the online theft. And what, is, what does it take to register a copyright? It is a relatively short online form and a $65 fee per work. You just send it in and it's stored somewhere with the government? It's, yes, it's stored digitally with the U.S. Copyright Office. And you have a registration number and a certificate. And should someone pirate that artwork, then you can bring a suit against them. And it shows the date that you registered your copyrights. Okay. And so say uh, an artist uh, or anybody sees that somebody is, number one, stealing their photos and using their photos. Uh, and then the second scenario is actually uh, copying the product. Uh, what, are the first thing, what are the things that we should do when we come across that happening to us? instantly screenshot it you need proof okay. so you want to collect as much data as you can there is um, a law called the digital millennium copyright act a dmca and you will issue a dmca strike against the web host or the platform like cloudflare or facebook that your content has been pirated and that you own it Mm -hmm. um, that is the official legal notification that, hey, you've, you've taken my work. You can't do this. You have to take it down. Um, and then the, the platform is required by law to remove it. And through treaty and convention, I think there's only two nations worldwide that don't recognize that. So even if it's in China, they are required to remove it. And so what defense do you have against the, the scammers registering the copyright for your art and then making you take it down? 
Uh, there is a counter notification and that has happened to some. Uh, that is why you register it as soon as you're done. As soon as you finish the piece, you take, in, in my case, sculpture, I take multiple photographs and dimensions and descriptions, and then I register that. And at this point, I will not share on social media until the piece has, has a registered copyright number. Mm -hmm. We uh, decide we want to make it known that we've had our, our images stolen. Uh, who are we reporting that to? You re report it to the, the platform that is offering the image. So it can be a website that has it, or it can be a, a social media site that has it, but the, the web host is where you report it. And generally okay. they have a form to do so. So if a website is reproducing it, we've got to figure out who is hosting that website? Yes. And there are free services online that okay. you can find the IP address and you can find the web host. And if we have someone like Facebook or Instagram, uh, do they make it easy for you to report this? No. No, there's a tiny, tiny little text in the bottom corner. And I actually had to Google the uh, copyright form for Facebook because it was so hard to find. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook makes you click through three boxes to say, hey, this is my content. And then you put in your name and your address and your contact information and where it was found uh, for the Facebook ads. You had to, I had to put in each unique identifier for each ad. And many times there were hundreds of ads using the same image. And the only difference was that the numeric advertising number uh, multiple times a day, that number would change. And so I would have to go through and check mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and report each one and each post that sh had shared it. So if the ad had a okay. hundred, and many times these ads are used, are, are paid for with stolen credit cards. So if you got scammed and you got that tiny thing, you need to watch your credit card notice to make sure that someone has not charged advertising or <laughs> Uber rides or uh -huh. um, a, a new computer at Best Buy. They will take, the, the scams will take the credit card information and the login information, and then they will just propagate themselves. Looking at it from a different perspective, uh, any idea why Facebook wouldn't jump to bring these people down immediately? Uh, number one, they're opening themselves up to a lawsuit. Number two, uh, all it takes is the consumers to be burned a couple of times. Like I've been burned twice. I will no longer buy anything off of Facebook or Instagram. So no. isn't this in their best interest to take down as soon as possible? I thought so as well. And I was very surprised when it did not happen. Um, I don't know why they haven't other than every click generates income for them. Uh, could it be that these scammers are making it difficult? Are they like uh, posting different pictures, uh, changing it a little bit, or are, no. are they making it hard for Facebook? No, they're not making it hard for Facebook at all. Okay. If I can find 35 infringements today using <laughs> yes. yeah. a single photo and the same copy, then they certainly can. And they, on one advertisement alone, it was shared over 240 times. Mm -hmm. And Facebook tells me that. And Facebook also has their tracking pixel. So multiple stores will use the same pixel. So there is no excuse for them not to be taking these down. All right. This just uh, sounds like Facebook is opening themselves up to uh, losing a lawsuit pretty quickly. What's their defense? Their defense is that they did not know. Their defense is, which is inaccurate because I was very good about reporting everything. Mm -hmm. um, I even called Facebook's intellectual property lawyer the head of their entire law team and explained this to him and emailed uh, all of these ads to him. And the, that crop of ads was taken down within two hours, whereas it had taken two to three weeks before that. Mm -hmm. But all of the shares are still up. You can see how, uh, you know, once it's up there, and it just gets spread, it's not going away. Yes, the, the internet culture of sharing. 
yes, uh, yes. which can be a wonderful thing, is really been turned to fraud. Uh, and it's a perfect vehicle for theft. Yeah. And I've also seen uh, instances where the Internet community uh, resists uh, people saying that this is a fraud. They say, ah, get away from here. We, we're just enjoying this and we don't care that it's been stolen. Yes. In my case, I was very fortunate that I have a lot of fo followers in the reptile community and they instantly knew my work and instantly knew that it was not a legitimate ad. And so they told me and I was getting emails saying, hey, this website stolen your stuff. They're advertising this stuff on Facebook. I saw it. It, it can't be yours. Mm -hmm. and, and and so I was very lucky with that. Um, I also have a large group of friends that are artists as well, and they had tackled this before with their own work. All right. Well, I want to keep track of what happens here, so we definitely need an update, but I would very much like to go into learning more about you. Let's Let's uh, let's leave this on a positive note and let's learn a little bit about uh, what you do and uh, your, your art. I graduated from art school in 93 and went on for 20 plus years in the commercial uh, sculpting industry for toy and giftware. Uh, I'm a licensed Disney sculptor. I've worked for Warner Brothers and Lucasfilms and did um, my start in reptile sculpture was in 2004 with a rattlesnake sculpture that I had done and was proofed by the Georgia herpetologist Whit Gibbons, um, whom I got to meet uh, last year at the International Herpetological Symposium. Mm -hmm. um, through that one sculpture, I was contacted through for, for the producer to A Million Ways to Die in the West, the movie, and did uh, one of the props for that movie, which was a rattlesnake. Uh, from that one rattlesnake, I was contacted to do a pair of beautiful door handles for the Chiricahua Desert Museum. Oh, those are and, gorgeous. And so the door, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> as well as the door handles for Thai Park's Iguana Land. Um, and I just have a passion for scaly creatures, particularly the venomous snakes. Now, why bronze? It is immortal. It will outlast all of us yeah. and it has the ability to be touched. And so few people will ever have the opportunity to touch a live rattlesnake or hopefully even a dead rattlesnake. So I really try and engage and allow people to see what it would be like to touch the animal and hopefully turn the tide of misperception that these are beautiful creatures and they need respect and appreciation and not fear. Do you do mostly commissions or do you actually have a product line? Uh, up until the scams, it was mostly commissions. However, a commission doesn't mean that it's not a product. So I retained copyright on that pair of rattlesnakes mm -hmm. for the Chiricahua Desert Museum so that I could produce them and defray the cost and allow more people to enjoy them. Um, so they were the product that one of the products okay. that were pirated. Um, but I'm slowly working towards my product and bringing fine art um, through the reptiles. Now, are you able to reproduce that using a mold? Is that how you do it? Or do you do them by hand? Mm -hmm. Everything is sculpted by hand. Whoa. And then I, <laughs> every scale, <laughs> they're all counted and they're all accurate. So then I will take a rubber mold and I will okay. cast a resin, a urethane resin, and that will be the tooling master that I will send to the foundry. They'll take another mold on the tooling master and then pour wax into that mm -hmm. mold and the lost wax process where the wax is burned out of a ceramic shell and the bronze is poured in and then they'll finish it. Um, it's almost magical. And it's an investment in time and money because it takes a great deal of skill to to do these things. Mm -hmm. Well, what is your plans uh, for the future? My plans are to continue making artwork and focusing on reptiles and frequently misunderstood creatures. Uh, I intend to continue to show um, 
I was accepted into the Society of Animal Artists back in 2020. So I'm hoping for gallery representation and to get my bronzes out there. Uh, I had hoped that the resin pieces that I had as my product line would fund the bronze. Um, but I've had to drastically scale back because of the scams. When I first started taking these down, I received emails in Chinese that said, send more pictures or post more pictures. We'll take it all and make it all for $5. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Where's the best place to see the true art uh, of Jennifer Cook? The best place right now is my website, snakearts.com, and the shows. Uh, I was recently where I met you at Animal Con. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm hoping to do Tinley in the spring uh, and continue submitting to fine art shows uh, under the wildlife fine art. And is there any social media that you frequent? I'm on Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook still. Um, and I enjoy seeing other people's work and it, it makes me angry when I know that my friends have, have had their artwork stolen. Um, but I intend to persevere and outlast them mm -hmm. and have the bronze outlast me and change some, some minds as possibly as well as some laws. All right. Is there anything else that... Uh, that we should talk about uh, concerning the topic for today? I would suggest with social media, when you see something really cool, which is all over social media, take a minute before you share it, take a minute before you like, and see who posted it. You know, is it a gibberish website? Is it is it a friend? Is it an artist? Does it actually give the artist the proper credit? Um, because it's ultimately all we have. Art was the original social media. It was the thing that everyone would see and, and, allow, and communicate. And it's beyond language. Um, but ultimately, it is our responsibilities. Or it's our responsibility as a consumer of internet uh, content to be aware of what's going on. And it's really up to us to stop it. Um, so if you see something that's shared that doesn't have the proper uh, credit to the artist, leave a comment. Um, if you see an ad that you know is fraudulent, report it. Don't just scroll through, don't like, don't share. We are all as responsible as a platform because the platform could not um could not survive without us the social media that we are engaging with is as good as we demand it to be and if yes. we let these things slip through if we let artists get taken advantage of then we're going to be living in a world where we just get cheap stuff and that doesn't sound good to me no and it's strip mining the true creative people that are trying to share what they do and improve and inspire. Um, and we will get to the point if this is allowed to continue where there is no authorship and there is no copyright and there is no attribution. If you create a thing, then you lose control of the thing mm -hmm. because it's suddenly everywhere and anyone can take it. All right, Jennifer, I want to thank you very much for coming on and sharing this. Uh, it, it's, there's been so many questions about keeping control of your art and appreciate you giving your insight and experiences. You are very welcome. <laughs>